everybody, this is Melissa Southern with Kyle Cook behind the camera with Bear Creek Photography NC. We have something very important we want to talk to you about today to make your pictures better, to make them professional, and that is using a tripod. Now, I know a lot of us don't like to use tripods. They're kind of heavy to carry around, and they don't really uh, allow you to move as quickly through your photographs, but that actually is a good thing because it makes you slow down and really concentrate on what you're trying to capture which is what you want to do to really make a professional level image. Now why would you use a tripod? It stabilizes your pictures. It gives you a nice solid platform to take your pictures from. So there's no movement based on you, based on either your heartbeat, your breathing, or just that you had too much coffee that morning. Whatever. It gives you a stable platform. It's also excellent for when you're doing long exposures, like if you were trying to take blurry water on a waterfall and you need to do a second or two exposure, now your tripod is stable so there's no movement introduced from the tripod. Same thing with low light exposures. If you're shooting at night, you're trying to do star trails or just shooting generally in the dark, you need a tripod to help stabilize you. Now there's a lot of varieties in tripods, so we're going to talk about all these different varieties to give you an idea of what to look for. Now we're going to talk about the different styles of tripods available on the market. The first thing we're going to talk about is the legs of the tripod, which is this lower section, the actual three separate legs. Up above this, this area up here is called the head of the tripod. That's where your camera attaches. With professional level tripods or more expensive tripods, these are usually sold in separate pieces. So you can buy the style of head that you like and the style of legs that you like and put the two together. So again, we're talking about the legs. Legs can come in multiple different styles and in multiple different sections. So this tripod, which is mine, has four sections. So it's got four separate areas that you can adjust the tripod with. It also, this particular one, is done with a kind of a flip lat walk to lock the legs in place. Which is a style that I actually prefer because it's faster for me. This tripod also has a center pole. Some don't. We'll show you one in a minute that does not have the center pole. I like having the center pole because it does give me a little extra height if I need it. Though this is not the best way to operate your tripod. It's best to extend your legs all the way and only then actually use this, this little center pole. But mine has another interesting feature. My center pole can run horizontal which allows me to get very close to the ground and still be able to extend out over a subject if I need to. Though I do have to add counterweight to the other side uh, to keep the tripod from tipping over. Now my particular legs are made of a carbon fiber, but I know that this exact same tripod leg system is available in a metal, usually aluminum, which is a little bit heavier, but it's also a little bit cheaper. Another thing to think about when you're getting tripods is the color of them. Some tripods are available like in a chrome type and others are available in black. We both prefer the black ones because they don't reflect into glass like a, if you're at a zoo or anything like that. So we both prefer black. Here's another variety of tripod. This particular one, also a carbon fiber model, has three sections, whereas mine had four. This one has three, so a lower, middle, and an upper section. And it's a twisting type of locking mechanism for the legs. So it's just a different way of doing it. Um, you have options for all of these, so you kind of pick the one that works for your preferences. And as you notice, this one does not have the center column, which allows this one to get low to the ground without having to move the, the column horizontal like I do with mine. Again, there's a lot of variety. As there are some that you can actually take the center column out and run it back up upside down and have the camera dangling below the tripod, which can work really well for certain subjects particularly some flowers if they're upside down and they're very low to the ground, like a trout lily, which can be difficult to photograph. So this is just gives you a little bit more options for what you're doing. Now one thing about tripods we do need to talk about is how much weight they can support. These tripods are pretty heavy duty. The carbon fibers are very strong but lightweight, but they have a rating on them. Every tripod set of legs and every tripod head has a weight rating on it. What you need to do with your own personal stuff, take your camera, your heaviest lens, and your flash, and weigh them together. So find a way to weigh them. If you can use one of those little luggage um, weighing devices, figure out how much the weight of your camera is. Say it's 10 pounds. Then you want to make sure that your tripod legs and your tripod head can support at least, say, 12 pounds or 13 pounds. You want to have these able to support more than what your equipment weighs. So that's one thing to be very careful of. 
sometimes your tripod head and your legs will take a separate weight on them. So the tripod legs might be able to support 20 pounds, but the head may be on, only be able to support 15 pounds. You go with the lower weight limit when you're getting your gear together and trying to find a good tripod. But any tripod is better than no tripod. So if you want to really buy a carbon fiber one, it might take a while to save up for it. Go ahead and get a cheaper version so at least you have a tripod to work with and get used to. Make sure that's the style that you want before you jump up to a level like this, which get very, very expensive. There are a wide variety of ranges with tripods. You can get really cheap, halfway, eh, okay tripods for $30 or $40 at Walmart or Kmart or any place like that or some of the small camera stores but they're going to have a very low weight rating and they have a lot of limitations. The tripod legs are usually attached to one another which means you cannot independently adjust them um, and they will also won't be able to independently adjust this way. This is not my tripod so if I fumble a little it's Kyle's fault. <laughs> so you see how this one is independent of these two? I can take it out at different angles. So if you're on an uneven surface you can arrange your tripod to still keep this part level but the legs might be all wonky and stuff. So that's an advantage to this style. You can get a good a decent tripod and head for $100, $150 as a kit together that can support a lighter weight camera. If you do have very heavy camera gear that's a very expensive camera setup, go ahead and get a more expensive tripod. You are resting all of that money you spent in that camera gear on this, so it's, good, it's a good investment to get a good one. But then again, get what you can. Whatever you can afford right now is what you should go and try to get. At least have something, and that will make your photographs a whole lot better. Next thing we're going to talk about is a little bit more about the tripod heads. I wanted to talk to you a little bit about tripod heads and your options there. Kyle and I happen to have identical tripod heads. Mine's a bit more beat up than hers is, but I tend to do that to my tripods and and most of my stuff in general. But tripod heads come in a different and several different varieties. These are both Arca Swiss style plates, which we both like because they're very tight. They stay nice and tight and hold the camera very securely. They are more expensive, these, this particular head is. It's a solid metal head um, and can be quite pricey and quite heavy. But for our gear, we enjoy having the stability of this type of a tripod head. These are both what's called a ball head. So when I loosen the the ball, it just can rotate in all sorts of different directions. And it can go, of course, to the, to the vertical as well. Or if you're going to point the camera straight up, you can do that too. So these we like. There are other heads, like there's a pistol grip head where it's essentially a ball head that has a extra grip on top of it that you squeeze and then you can tip your camera however you want to. Then there's a pan tilt head which has different knobs for different controls. So it's got one knob that goes around, another large knob that tips up and down, and then another one that tips side to side. Uh, I, that's a style I used to actually use until I got used to the ball head. Most professional photographers that we see now tend to have the ball heads. They're also a little bit smaller overall in size and take up less room. Now one thing that I do with my ball head is I cover it with a cover because as I said I tend to beat things up. Um, so I keep it covered most of the time when it's not in use. Um, to kind of protect it a little bit from the wear and tear that I cause. I killed my, my cover. <laughs> Kyle killed her cover, in case you didn't catch that. <laughs> but my tripod's nice. <laughs> but yeah, her tripod looks good compared to mine, so... Tripods come in a variety. Yours might end up looking a lot like mine. There's a lot of a... I don't know Kyle can zoom in here. A lot of a wear and tear. And, and there was one, at one time, in ancient history, there was even a level up here. I don't know when I lost that. Probably about two minutes after I got the tripod head. Um, there is a bubble level down here that's still there, but I took out the top one early on, which is, again, why I have a tripod cover. What you want to do, if you have the option to go to a camera store, look at the different tripod heads, try them out on the tripods they have there, and see what style you like. As I said, we both like this style, but you might prefer to have a pan tilt or a pistol grip. It's all up to you and what you prefer. So get out there and get experimenting a little bit. Now we've talked about the heads, we've talked about the legs, now we need to talk about how your camera attaches to the head of your tripod. Now again, there's variety here. What you really want to look for is a tripod head that has what's called a quick release plate, which means you very can quickly pop it right off the tripod, pop it right back on, without having to unscrew anything or screw anything back into your camera. 
So for instance, I, again, I mentioned we have an Arca Swiss type plate, so this will look different than a lot of other plates. But on this, this is one of Kyle's cameras. It's just a plate that attaches to the bottom of her camera. And you screw it in. And this particular type, we almost never have to retighten them. But many quick release plates, you do need to check to make sure they're nice and tight before you put your camera on your tripod. And this attaches very easily to this particular style of tripod head. So I'll do a quick attachment. And even though that's at an angle, it's now attached to the tripod and it's just as easy to remove it. I just loosen the knob and can slide it right off. Now I have a different plate on my camera for this particular model. It's called an L bracket. So you can see the tripod attachment is this L shape that wraps around the camera. It does leave open the end so I can reach all my little cords and attachments that are happen to be on this side of the camera. But there's a distinct advantage to what's the, to the L bracket. So if I'm shooting like this and I decide I want to shoot a vertical, instead of having to do this, which now you see my lens is much lower than it was in the horizontal position, what I do is I leave the tripod head exactly where it is. I pop the camera off very quickly and switch it here. Now the lens is still in the same position, so I don't have to reposition myself. My composition is now just changed to a vertical from a horizontal, which is something I really like. Kyle has one of these for one of her other cameras as well. So if you do go Arca Swiss type style, this is definitely a benefit. It is expensive to buy, but it is worth it in the long run. And again, we don't have the problem with having to retighten these uh, numerous times. They usually stay tight all by themselves. While we're on the subject of attaching your camera to the tripod, occasionally you have a bigger lens like this one that actually has its own attachment to attach it to the tripod. And there's a reason for this. This lens is heavy. It's got a lot of weight to it. And when you get to these bigger lenses, they are heavy. And if you attach them to the camera and then attach the camera to your tripod, it puts a lot of pressure on the attachment part on your camera and on your lens. And it can actually break how your lens attaches to your camera or it can break the camera. So you don't want that. If your lens has a place to put a tripod attachment, use it. There's a reason for that. And again, this is the same style. It locks in. And now the camera would just be attached on the back of this. It's more balanced this way and it relieves the pressure on the camera. So again, if your lens has an attachment area for this, use it. That's what it's there for. Now on the same note as that, you will have to have a separate plate for this or move the quick release plate from your camera to your lens. I prefer to have a separate plate, that way I don't have to worry about removing anything. But that's up to you how you want to do that. Another thing you can do with your tripod on the legs is add some sort of cover. There's several reasons why you might want to do this. One of the simplest is it keeps your hands from touching cold metal if it's in the middle of the winter time and you grab onto it, you know, it's a little bit more comfortable. It adds a little padding to the, to the tripod legs. It's always going to be on this, on this upper section. And we have two different styles of, of coverings here by far. Different styles, so <laughs> we'll talk about that in a minute. Um, it also gives you a little padding, so when you pick your tripod up and put it over your shoulder, which is how I tend to carry mine, you've got some padding on your shoulder. Um, now Kyle's, you can see hers are camouflage, and there's a reason for that. She does a lot of photography of birds, particularly songbirds, and this is just another layer. She tends to wear camo. She's got a camouflage hunting blind that she used to hunt the birds. Um, so this kind of makes her tripod blend in more. Mine is just a gray piece. And just so you guys know what this is, hers are, hers are actually real lens cover. They actually say lens coat on the tag. Hers are actually real tripod covers. They're easy to remove and put on another tripod if she wanted to. Mine have been on here for years. I don't know that I've ever removed them. And this is actually just a piece of PVC pipe insulation that I got from a home improvement store and some tape. And I just cut the six foot section into the sections that fit my tripod, ratcheted up and taped it. So you can go from an official cover to the unofficial version and the much cheaper version <laughs> very, very easily. Yes, so to give you an idea of price wise, $50, $3. So <laughs> big price difference. It's all up to what you want to do. Now with tripods, there comes some maintenance that you have to do with them, but it's really pretty simple. If you get your tripod wet, which I regularly do stick mine in streams to stabilize and get the shot that I want, 
I tend to let mine air dry as long as it's fresh water. So I'll just leave it standing full up, all the legs extended, and let it air dry. You could also take a paper towel or a towel and dry down the legs before you close them so you don't add moisture to the junction between the legs, which can cause rust and other damage to the tripod. If you go to a place with salt water like the beach and sand, whether it's the beach or somewhere else that has sand, you have to get that off of there too. The sand can scrape out the gears and make, you know, kind of putting the tripod legs really difficult. I have a tripod legs that are like that, that I can barely open and close it anymore. There's so much sand in it. So getting that sand off, getting the salt water off, that's key. So you need to clean them. Some of us are lucky enough to have a husband like Roger who can take a tripod apart and put it back together. So Kyle's husband can clean hers out really well. Yay! Um, I tend to just try to clean it and then put it away. That way it's I don't have to worry about taking the whole thing apart. Now you also want to make sure that you tighten the legs or check the legs every now and then. Most tripods come with a little tool, a little Allen wrench that goes with them that you can use to tighten up the joints, whether it's a screw type or a snap type. They've got some sort of tool that goes with them. I keep that tool in my camera bag. That way I always have it with me and so I can tighten my tripod if it gets loose. Now there are other ways to stabilize yourself when you're out shooting because sometimes you can't get the tripod where you need to or you're in a place that doesn't allow tripods. That's something to always check before you go to a location. Make sure they allow tripods. Now one thing you can use is called a monopod. A lot of places will allow monopods but not tripods and it's just like the name sounds. A monopod is one single leg. You see it oftentimes on the sidelines of sporting events. These large cameras, these large lenses supported by a single leg. It does add a little stability it works better for some than for others, but it is something else that you can have in your kit to use if you need to. Another thing you can do is actually really simple. Instead of holding your camera out like this and looking at the live view screen, pull it into your chest. Bring the elbows in, pull it closer to you. This is more stable than being out here. So just that simple move can make you much more stable. Another thing you can do is lean against something. So here we have a tree that I can lean against. It could be a door frame, a wall, anything like that. But if you lean against it, put your weight into it, or even propping the camera flat up against it, that works as well. You can also use the hood of a car as long as the car is not running. You can use that to stabilize a table, a bean bag underneath the camera. There are all sorts of ways to do this. One of the most common times you can't get a tripod in position is when you're shooting something very low to the ground. My tripod with the center column, I have to get the center column out of the way. Some tripods you can't do that. But you might want to photograph something like the little flowers and plants and you know, right now we've got bluets around us. You might want to photograph that. So here's a way that you can do that. Now this is a Definitely not the most flattering of positions, particularly if you were behind me, but it gets the job done. You see, I've got both of my elbows planted in the ground and I've got my face pressed against the camera. And this is kind of making my own tripod. You could also lay down flat on the ground. Now this is not going to be as stable as actually having a tripod and being able to get this low, but it does give you an option to help you get a better image. And that's what this is about, stabilizing you and getting your best image that I can't even use. <laughs> We're done filming, Melissa. Oh. It's time to quit. Ah! This video has been brought to you by Bear Creek Photography NC. Featuring Melissa and the Nats. Produced and edited by Kyle Cook. Do what? You give the will of fans to blow your hair around, you know? Usually we don't have a problem with that up here. This upper section here where the camera attaches is called the head.